Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about the shred command <clears throat> and why you might want to use it. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about how file systems kind of work because it's sort of relevant to this. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so the shred command is a command, I believe it's part of Core Utils. Uh, yes, it is part of Core Utils. Uh, and the idea behind it, oh, I should probably shut it over here. Man, shred. The idea behind it is it takes a file that's on disk and writes a bunch of junk to it. Uh, and the idea behind it is to make it harder to recover the original data in the case of deletion. Uh, for instance, I've used this before when uh, I want to delete like private keys or other stuff that's on a hard disk that I'm getting rid of, for instance. Uh, rather than just deleting. And the reason that it's a little bit different than just deleting is uh, file systems are pretty lazy. Now, modern file systems are a little bit different, um, but you can kind of imagine a file system is looking something like this, where there is a table of blocks up at, the, up at some part of the disk, a fixed part of the disk. And these are usually like numbers that point to a particular block on the disk. Uh, so let's say block, 20 or whatever. Uh, and these numbers also have like file name information and other stuff, other some such stuff like that. And so you might imagine if you have your, I don't know, private key sitting over on this block sitting somewhere. So I don't know, or say blah, 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 whatever, whatever your key is. Um, this little block, the uh, inode pointer thing here is basically just pointing to this, div this, uh, actual location on disk. And when you delete a file, it basically just deletes this pointer here. It doesn't actually delete the contents of the file. You can imagine, let's just, um, just exit out. That way it'll be easier to understand. Oh, that's not an X. Uh, so when it deletes it, it basically just deletes the pointer to the data. The data might still be there on disk. And so this allows you to potentially recover deleted data. Uh, by you know searching through the raw bytes of the data and picking out stuff that looks like a private key or, or some such like that. And so what Shred does is Shred takes this file and writes over it in place, uh, in, in theory, destroying the data or at least making it harder to recover uh, from just reading direct bytes from the disk. You would have to use actual you know, forensic tools and f fancy stuff that would cost a lot of money to recover rather than just easy stuff like looking at the raw bytes on disk. Uh, and so I wanted to show you a quick example of how it works. Uh, so if we said, if we, for instance, had uh, secret.txt here and put some secret stuff in here, and I wanted to just delete this file, but I didn't want to just do rm secret. Uh, I want to first run shred on it. And shred uh, you know, has a default number of iterations, so it'll write over it some number of times. Um, you can also make it delete the file afterwards. I'm going to not delete the file just so I can show you what it looks like. Uh, oh, you can also have it write zeros over at the end to hide that you shredded it. There's a whole bunch of options here, but let's just run it with the default options since I usually find they're good enough. We run shred on this, and now we look at the contents of this. Uh, you'll see that it has overwritten it with a bunch of binary garbage. So we don't, we don't see the original data there at all. And then once you've shredded it, you can delete it. Um, so that's kind of like a safer way to purge content or purge files on disk that you don't really want anyone else being able to see. Anyway, that's the shred command. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.